The space around Earth is full of junk that we put there. Here, you can see the 21,000 objects currently tracked by the United States Strategic Command, only 1,500 of which are operational satellites. These extra pieces come about from high-speed collisions of the satellites which are moving at several kilometers a second relative to each other. 3,000 pieces came about from China's 2007 anti-satellite test, which used a missile to destroy an old weather satellite. A further estimated 170 million objects too small to track also orbit the Earth. Moving at several kilometers a second, this means even small flecks of paint can cause serious damage. This poses a strong risk to the astronauts and cosmonauts which live on the International Space Station. To minimize this risk, the engines aboard the space station are sometimes fired to move the station out of the path of space junk. The engines also play an important role in keeping the station in space, as astronaut Jeff Williams explains. There is a small amount of drag here, even 200 miles above the Earth. Um, and they say it's from uh, atomic oxygen. So there's a very small amount of uh, oxygen present out there in the vacuum of space. And so it's not a 100% vacuum. And that uh, those uh, atoms uh, cause a, a finite amount of drag on the space station. So over a period of time, we slow down and our altitude over the Earth uh, decreases. So due to that, and also uh, due to the requirements of rendezvous of uh, spacecraft like Progress and Shuttle, we need to adjust the orbit, usually increase it um, periodically, and we're going to do that this morning. I'm going to try to give a demonstration while it's happening so that you can see the acceleration from the engine. So let's head down to the Russian segment and uh, prepare for that. Without these regular boosts, the orbit of the space station would slowly decay and would fall back to Earth. Unlike the station and some satellites, the 21,000 pieces of tracked space junk can't perform reboosts to stay in orbit, and as such, pieces of junk or older satellites regularly crash back into the Earth, such as this piece of debris I talked about in an earlier video. Smaller pieces of junk burn up during the immense heat of re-entry and never reach the ground. The larger pieces, such as old satellites, usually contain enough propellant to control the point of re-entry. To minimize the risk to any life, these satellites are brought down over Point Nemo in the Pacific Ocean, where the closest land is over 2,410 kilometers away. To date, over 263 satellites have been brought here to rest, such as the European Space Agency's Jules Verne spacecraft, seen here. Spectacular! Occasionally though, as is the nature with space travel, something goes wrong, and large spacecraft or even space stations make uncontrolled re-entries. The largest of these uncontrolled re-entries took place in July 1979, when the 70-tonne American space station Skylab scattered debris over Western Australia, between the towns of Esperance and Rolina. Although some of the smaller pieces of the space station rained down on some homes, no one was injured, and so far, no one ever has been. The reason nothing has ever happened is because most of the world is covered by ocean, and most of the remaining land is uninhabited. In the coming week, another large piece of space junk will come back down to Earth. China's first space station, Tiangong-1. The station was launched in September of 2011 to be used as a manned laboratory as well as for demonstrating spacecraft docking capabilities. During its short life, the station hosted two manned crews of Taikonauts, including China's first female Taikonaut. The 8.5 tonne station will be the ninth largest object ever to make an uncontrolled landing back on Earth, which will make it a spectacular sight to behold. It is predicted to come down on Easter Sunday, but only two days out, the error on this calculation is still off by half a day. This is because of the complexities of modelling the atmosphere, which is dependent on solar activity. In general, the uncertainty of the prediction is 20% of the remaining orbital lifetime. This means that seven hours before the re-entry of the space station, the uncertainty will still be plus or minus an entire orbit. This means it's still possible for the space station to land anywhere on Earth between 43 degrees north and south. This image from the European Space Agency shows the parts of the globe that this covers and the corresponding population density along each line of latitude. The probability of re-entry is highest at the maximum and minimum latitudes as the station orbits the Earth at an angle to the equator. This means it spends more time over the edges than crossing the equatorial bands. As of the publishing of this video, the most accurate decay prediction is for the 1st of April at 12.20 universal time, plus or minus 15 hours, which will mean the decay could occur over any of the lines on this map. As I've already mentioned, no one has ever been injured by space junk, and this will be no different. The chances of a piece of Tiangong-1 hitting you are 10 million times less than being hit by lightning. Part of the reason for this is that most of the station will burn up, and only one or two tons will reach the Earth. Although it poses no risk, the deorbit will be beautiful to anyone who witnesses it. 
and serves as a reminder to the growing amount of space junk that orbits us, which may one day become a larger issue. If you're still watching, I'd like to thank you. The video wasn't as polished as I would have liked, but I had to publish before the station comes down. I'd like to say thank you and welcome to the hundreds of new subscribers that have joined since my last video over a year ago. Hopefully the next one won't be so long in the future.